Hey, my dear sweet Benzo friends, it's Dr. Jen here. Today I wanted to talk to you about all the things that I wish that the world knew about Benzo Withdrawal. I recently posted a blog at benzowithdrawalhelp.com about that, and I just thought I'd follow up with this quick little video. I posted it because I'm celebrating 10 years of being in the Benzo Withdrawal community. That's a long time. And I went through my own withdrawal, which was really ugly and horrific and <laughs> very challenging. And I'm on the other side now. But I have also spoken to countless people from all around the world who are going through benzo withdrawal. So these are some of the things that I wish that the world knew about benzos. One, I wish that everybody knew that doctors are not perfect. They don't know everything. And one of my doctor friends said, really, we just know what the pharmaceutical companies are telling us. So doctors are grossly uneducated most of the time about the dangers about benzodiazepines. Maybe they know a little, you know, they've heard, yeah, they can be a little addicting and maybe a little challenging to get off of. But trust me, the vast majority of them don't know the true depths and horrors that <laughs> being on a benzo can bring into somebody's life. And I have helped a handful of doctors get off their medication. They were, you know, they were tapering and, and to help them understand their symptoms. And all of them said the same thing. I had no idea. I've been prescribing this medication and I had no idea. And I will never prescribe it again. And I'll do my best to educate others. And one doctor in particular worked with a group of other doctors and he said, I am doing my best to educate them, but they don't want to listen. They think, you know, I'm either just anxious or I'm making it up. He said, I just can't get through to them. So you can understand what we're up against if a doctor can't even get his colleagues in his own practice to understand the depths of benzo withdrawal. But at the end of the day, all that really matters is doctors don't understand and we all need to be aware of that. So it's important that if a doctor is wants to prescribe a benzodiazepine for you, Xanax, Ativan, Valium, Clonopin, Librium, any of their generics or any other drug, a lot of times the drugs end in PAM, P-A-M, um, diazepam, clonazepam. So Google and find out if the drug that a doctor's recommending for you to take is a is a benzodiazepine. So it's just important that we understand doctors don't know everything and we need to safeguard our health. So not only do they not know how dangerous these drugs are and they are still prescribing them, sadly, they also don't know the correct way to withdraw from the medication and how to navigate this benzo withdrawal syndrome that can go on for years. Most doctors say, reduce your medication by a quarter and over a month, you'll be off. That might work with pain meds, different types of meds. It doesn't work with benzo withdrawal. I mean, benzodiazepines usually because the drug has actually altered our GABA receptors. They've downregulated them and we need GABA receptors because they're the brake, they're the inhibitory system, the GABA, it's that inhibitory uh, system. The opposite of that is glutamate, that's the gas pedal, go, 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 glutamate's the brake, let's slow down, let's stay calm and cool and collected. So the benzo has gone in it and downregulated them, meaning they're not working. It's kind of, if you keep stretching a rubber band, eventually that rubber band is gonna stop working. It's going to lose its elasticity and it won't function very well. Same with the GABA receptors. The drug is forcing them to do something that they're not designed to be doing. And after a while, they just go, I'm out of here. <laughs> they stop working. So when you want to get off the drug, you have to be careful because you want to go slowly that you don't shock your system. That's why we say, please do not cold turkey unless it's absolutely like your life depends on it. Please don't cold turkey. I'm the poster girl for a really bad cold turkey. I tapered. I was sick. I went back up because my doctor told me to. Tried to go back down. We was, was even more sick than another doctor. And trust me, all these doctors that were taking care of me claimed to be experts. I know about benzos. 
and then cold turkey me with phenobarbital. You do not want to cold turkey unless it is absolutely critically 100%. It's the only way you can do it. So just keep in mind that doctors don't know how to best get people off. And I wish that they did. I wish everybody who was on these medications and they want to get off, I wish that everybody had access to the, or knowledge of the Ashton Manual because Dr. Heather Ashton, the late Dr. Heather Ashton, really was the leader, the thought leader in explaining benzodiazepines and, and their withdrawal, how to do it and the syndrome and everything. So I wish the world, one, wasn't so blindly trusting of doctors and two, that they would do their research to, to avoid being harmed by medications or if they're on a medication to understand how to safely get off. And I wish that people understood that you can become tolerant to these medications. So you can be taking a steady dose as prescribed and still go into what's known as tolerance withdrawal. So you can get sick even while on the drug. And some people hit tolerance in just a handful of days. We, and we don't know what that DNA anomaly is that allows the drug to go in and damage some brains and not others. It's an unknown at this point. But you can get sick while you are taking the drug. I certainly went into tolerance withdrawal. I was on the drug for a really long time. I was seeing neurologists and cardiologists and internists and specialists this and specialists that. Nobody could tell me what was wrong with me. Even though on my intake with everybody, you know, at the very top, I'm taking clonazepam as prescribed, you know, this much every night. So it's really important that we understand tolerance withdrawal. I wish the world understood that, you know, how to taper correctly, how to come off correctly. And I wish the world understood that once you're off, even though the drug is out of your body, you can still be very symptomatic because this isn't about flushing the chemical out of your body. It can be long gone, but now it's about the, the brain has got to repair itself. All those GABA receptors have got to you know, come back online and repair themselves and the nervous system has to get, get toughened up again. It's, it's got to get strong again and that takes time. And there's a lot of variables it seems that goes into the mix. Some people heal relatively quickly, others are long haulers and they take longer and we don't know why that is. But once you're off, it takes some time. So I really wish the world understood that benzodiazepines are, even taken as prescribed, are a dangerous drug for many people. And that getting off of them is, a challenge. And that's like the kindest word that I can use. It is a horrific journey for some people. And then once off, it still takes time to heal. And it's important to understand that people going through benzo withdrawal have not developed some new pathology, but yet doctors love to tell us that we're bipolar, we've got a you know generalized anxiety disorder, we've got a panic disorder, we're becoming schizophrenic, uh, we've got Lyme disease, we've got MS, we've got ALS, you name it, we've been diagnosed with it. Benzo withdrawal mimics a whole bunch of horrible things, but we don't have those things 99.99% .99 of the time, we're just in benzo withdrawal. So I wish the world really understood how damaged people are and how sick they are. We don't think right. We, our feelings are all out of whack. Uh, our memory's impaired. We're physically impaired with all sorts of symptoms. We are just so not ourselves. I used to say I just was eviscerated. Whatever made me Jen was gone. I didn't know who I was. I, I was so disconnected to everything and anything. Plus, you know, all the other symptoms. It was so hard. So I really wish the world understood the truth about benzodiazepines 
and the truth about how to get off of them and the truth about this journey to recovery. It takes time and we need people who understand that. And we need the medical community to understand that. We need them to understand, stop throwing other medications at us. Your antipsychotic is not gonna help us. Antidepressants rarely seem to help people in benzo withdrawal. We need time and we need those four cornerstones that I talk about, that I blog about and I talk about in my support group mornings with Jen. We need to eat right, a whole food plant-based diet. We need to move enough, not too much, because then it can rev us up, but we don't want to be couch potatoes if we can help it. We need to move. We need to stress less, and that's why I teach polyvagal theory to everybody. And we need to love well. And I know those sound like kind of basic, like, well, of course, all of that makes sense. But it's really important that we focus on those and really make them part of our everyday daily lives while we're recovering from benzo withdrawal. I really wish the world understood benzos, especially now. We've got COVID, we've got, you know, the politics are just crazy right now with the election coming up. We've got so much going on in the world. I think everybody's walking around with this collective angst and, and mm, unsettled stuff. And so many people are being put on benzos right now. And it breaks my heart because half of those people are going to be in for a horrific surprise when they get really sick and they're having a terrible time to get off. And benzo withdrawal really impacts people's lives sometimes in really tragic ways. So I wish the world understood benzos. I wish the world, I wish the world would avoid, I wish everybody in the world would avoid going on one in a way that, you know, is going to put them at risk of becoming chemically dependent. They should not be prescribed for more than a few days. Uh, that's what my dear friend who's a, a psychiatrist here in the Bay Area who is now well-versed in benzo withdrawal, you know, he shakes his head and he says, nobody, nobody should be on these long-term. And he's right. So that's what I have to say this morning, <laughs> this beautiful, beautiful morning here in the San Francisco Bay Area about benzo withdrawal. I really wish the world knew more. And I'm going to post soon about what I wish people who are not in benzo withdrawal, what I wish, what the world knew about those of us who are going through it. Because we need so much support and we need the world to understand exactly what benzo withdrawal is and how long it can last and what we need because we need specific things. We need so much support. So I will do a blog and a vlog about that soon. You guys, please take very good care of yourselves. You are all such, such precious, precious people. And please be kind and gentle with yourself and take it easy and know that just all you have to do is today, just one day at a time. And if you need help, reach out. I'm here. I've got your back. Take good care. <laughs>